Hey everyone, Stevie here with Heaps of Bleeps. I have a different kind of video for you today where I am going to do a tutorial about how to make my most recent device as opposed to the normal kind of demos that I put out. So this most recent device is MIDI release. Um, you can get it for free from my site. It's pretty self-explanatory. It just delays your note offs to give your notes extra release. There's a knob to set the release time and a button to clear the held notes. So yeah, it's probably one of the more simple devices I've made. So I thought it'd be a good tutorial because it's a good example of the way I've been using the poly object to handle MIDI messages in a way that I haven't seen a tutorial about before. But I mean, I haven't seen all the tutorials. If there is one, uh, link it in the comments and uh, feel free to be mean to me. Or like if there's a much better way of doing this or something, definitely let me know because yeah. I'd like to know. Okay, so let's open up this device here. I'm just going to go step by step. I expect you to know some basic max objects, you know, trigger objects, basic, you know, math objects. Knowing the, the poly tilde object is also definitely helpful. If you don't know about that one, you can definitely find tutorials on YouTube and stuff if you just look up making a polyphonic synth in Max MSP. I tried to find the ones that I went through a long time ago and i i couldn't but if i do find them i'll link them below because it was definitely like my first bigger max project and it kind of got me into it all okay so basically um first you have this midi in object self-explanatory this midi select is how i split up the midi so the notes are coming out of the first all the notes because i have the note all argument here and the rest of the MIDI is coming out of this, this last outlet here, going directly to MIDI out, still as raw MIDI. Okay, so basically the way I'm using the poly object is that I want each note to go to its own voice and to continuously go to that voice. I don't want, you know, it to be stealing voices. I'm not using the normal, like, pre pen MIDI note kind of way that uh, you're taught to um, use the poly object. I just want to say, you know, if you are building a synthesizer, this probably isn't the most efficient way of doing it because I mean, you do, you would need 128 voices. So, you know, this more works with more simple kind of MIDI processing stuff. Okay. Yeah. So the way I'm using the poly object here is different from the way it's normally used. Normally you would just like prepend the MIDI note with the word MIDI note, which would, let poly know that it's working with midi and kind of let it do the voice allocation that's built into poly which is very helpful for a lot of reasons but for this device it was important that each note continuously be sent to the same voice so i could like let them kind of cut off um notes so there won't be like stuck notes or other cut off or like basically you know if, if the release is a long release and you send two C3s into it before the release is up, you have to clear that first note off with the second C or else you're going to get some stuck notes. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically my main goal here is to get um, each individual MIDI note to consistently send to its own voice of poly so it can do things like cut off notes so they don't hold over and turn into stuck notes or like have one note off, cut short the actual current note you're playing. Basically, the way I'm doing that is with this uh, MIDI process patcher window here. Basically, I'm adding plus one to the note number, or you know, to the pitch number, and then using the prepend object to add a target before that. So basically, every time a note is sent to this poly, First, a target message with the number one above the note name is going to be sent to the poly. And that makes it so that pitch zero is always going to voice one, pitch one is going to voice two, and so on. The reason why I added the one is because if you target zero, it sends it to every single instance of poly, and I only want it to send to the single ones. So, you know, I here have 128 instances of this patch of poly. And I want each note to go to one voice. Sorry, 
I don't know if I beat you over the head with that enough. Okay, so let's open this Polytilda patch to see what I got going on in here. This looks a little tricky with all these trigger objects, but it's pretty simple once I go into it. This whole first part is just separating node offs from node ons and sending them out of either one of these gates. So I'm doing that by basically, you know, this trigger object, I'm gonna send two of the notes. The first one it sends is being compared, or the velocity of that note is being compared to zero. If it's zero, it's gonna, this is gonna send out a one, which you then add plus one, two. So that means that gate two is gonna be open if it's zero, and if it's anything else, gate one is gonna be open. And then after that, it's gonna send the note through the gate. Yeah, so all node offs are going to be sent through this little thing, and all node ons are going to be sent through there. Um, so the node offs are basically being delayed. Um, then there's some other stuff to just make sure you never get stuck notes, and the node ons are going straight through. So the way they're getting delayed, um, uh, you have a okay. So what what it is getting split up by this trigger objects. And the first thing that's going to do is it's going to send this list into the cold inlet of the ZL reg object down here. Now, ZL reg, if you're unfamiliar, is basically like a list version of the I object. So it'll store a list with this inlet. If you put a list in here, it'll just send it right out and store it. So it can, if you know if you bang here, it'll send it out again. It's, it's, exa it's exactly like the I object, but for lists. This list is being sent to the cold inlet here. Then you're opening up this gate, which is going to let through this bang that's being delayed. So you open up the gate when there's a node off. And then this bang is delayed by your release time that you set with the knob. Once that bang is delayed, it comes out of this uh, delay object or del object. And it is sent first through the gate. Um, with this, sorry, it's a little hard to see which one is going here, but this B is going into here, and the zero is going into there. Sorry, I should have cleaned this up before. This bang is being sent through the gate, and then once the bang is sent, the gate is being closed by this zero here. Um, and now the gate also accepts bangs from the clear button, which, you know, over here. So, yeah, you don't want the clear message to clear a note before you actually let go of the note. You only want it to clear notes that are being held by the device. So this gate is controlling that too, if that makes sense. So yeah, and then the bang comes out through here, triggers the note off, and it is sent. So now here we have the how the note ons are being processed. It's mostly just being sent straight through, but before it's being sent straight through, it has to close this gate because... If this gate is still open, then it needs to be closed because there's a new node off. Like that means, you know, if this gate is still open, that means that there's a bang here that hasn't come out yet. And you need to close this so the bang doesn't come out, if that makes sense. And then you also need to flush whatever note is in here by sending a bang here. So, you know. If, if there's a hell note, this flush is going to know that it's held, and the bang here clears all the held notes. So that basically makes it so, you know, it clears the note before it plays the new note, if the note is being held by the device still. And then it sends the list out, and it's uh, packed in with, you know, pack object, and it goes out. And yeah, then it gets sent into this MIDI format device, uh, formats the MIDI, and sends it out. Um, and then I'll, I guess I'll just go over this live banks thing. Um, cause for a while I didn't know how to do push banks and this is super simple example of it. Basically, uh, the live ba banks object just controls your push banks. Um, I named it all. I added the release here. I didn't put the clear cause you know, you don't really want to control a button with a knob. It's a little weird. It's a basic tutorial of how I made this device. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, definitely comment them below. I'd be happy to answer them. I may try to make more of these tutorials in the future with some of my other simple devices. Thanks for sticking through it, and I, I hope you learned something. Uh, bye.